This sculpture is called the Farnese Atlas. The original sculpture of Atlas was created during the Hellenistic period of Greek art. This particular piece is a Roman copy made in marble. The Greeks would most likely have done this sculpture in bronze. This Roman marble copy was made around 150 AD and is 7 feet tall with a 65 centimeter diameter sphere. A wealthy Italian family of popes and cardinals with the name Farnese collected art and came upon the atlas, hence its name, the Farnese Atlas. It is housed in Naples National Archaeological Museum in Italy. This is one of the most important Italian archaeological museums, and it also is important for all classical and particularly ancient Roman archaeology. This sculpture depicts the Greek mythological story of the Titan Atlas. When Zeus defeated the Titans, he gave Atlas the burden of the sky on his shoulders. What Atlas is carrying on his shoulders is not a globe, but a celestial sphere. Jeff Matthews said it best when he said it is the imaginary rotating bowl of night above us that contains the stars we see. As you can see, the constellations are done in a relief sculptural technique. Relief sculpture means a raised looking sculpted element upon a solid background. This sphere contains 41 classical Greek constellations on how the ancients saw the sky. Labeled are three examples of constellations that were depicted on the sphere. Pyxis, Nautica, Hydra, and Sagittarius. Some scholars in astronomy and art history have suggested that Aratus's poem Phenomena about Greek constellations is the inspiration of the sculpture. Others have suggested that the Greek astronomer and mathematician Hipparchus and his lost star catalog was the inspiration of the sculpture. This raises the question on when the original Greek sculpture was actually made, 275 BC during the time of Aratus or 129 BC during the time of Hipparchus. Nevertheless, it still has extreme astronomical importance because it is the oldest surviving depiction of this set of the original western constellations and as such can be a valuable resource for studying their early development, said Bradley E. Schaefer, a professor of astronomy and astrophysics at Louisiana State University. The Colossi of Memnon are twin 18 meter tall statues made out of quartzite sandstone. They are located near modern-day Luxor, Egypt. The figures are seated facing towards the River Nile from the side of the dead with their hands on their knees. Both colossi are depictions of Pharaoh Amenhotep III. Below them are his wife T and his mother Mutamwia next to his legs carved into the throne. Also, the god Happy is carved into the side. These statues were built to guard the entrance to Amenhotep III's memorial temple. However, this temple was destroyed by river erosion. Ironically, Happy was the god of the annual Nile flooding patterns. In 27 BC, a large earthquake shattered the northern Colossus. It collapsed it from the waist up and cracked the lower half. The cracked, damaged half began to sing in the morning, always around dawn. According to the Greek historian and geographer Strabo, it sounded like a blow. However, he could not determine the source of the sound. Modern sources have stated that if natural, the sound was probably caused by rising temperatures and the evaporation of dew inside the porous rock. The singing likely stopped in 199 AD after a repair effort undertaken by Roman Emperor Septimius Severus fixed the statues. But by this time, the singing had become such an integral part of the statue's identity that it had become sealed into their name forever. Memnon was an Ethiopian king who was also a Trojan war hero. He was said to be the son of Eos, the goddess of dawn. These statues were named after him because they always sang at dawn, as if Memnon was crying out to his mother Eos. The Colossi of Memnon are important in preserving the legacy of Pharaoh Amenhotep III, as he was the father of Akhenaten. He ruled from 1388 to 1351 BC. According to Margaret Bunsen, Amenhotep III was a highly successful pharaoh. 
She says, Tributes and trade profits provided Amenhotep III with unending wealth as he built many shrines and monuments, many of which have not survived. Numerous efforts to preserve the Colossi have been undertaken, however, there is only so much we can do with their current condition. We are lucky to have these two massive statues, even as damaged as they are. They are an awesome and imposing piece of Egyptian history that should not be forgotten. <laughs>